here and welcome to my craft room. I am going to be doing some folk art watercoloring and I was inspired uh, by a painting I saw on Sandy Olmach's channel and I decided to switch it up from traditional watercoloring to folk art watercoloring. And I'm using my two, four and six inch watercolor brush. And I am using six and a half right there by eight and a half watercolor paper. You can use the Fabriano there. It's Fabriano 50% cotton. I'm using the 25% cotton right here. And I cut that uh, down in half, six and a half by eight and a half is the size. It's quite big. And I'm gonna use the brushes. Now here, I just took these pins from um, Michael's. You get about a hundred of them for a real good deal. And I cut them off blunt on the bottom so you get a nice hole. I stick them in and I use my Sharpies on the top to make the colors. So it was a quick and easy way. Now you can also, I get these at the dollar store, they're those little shower caps and I put them over top of my good paint brushes that I have here. And this is for uh, my acrylic paints and I use them for watercolor actually. And they're quite long because I use them on canvas so you're standing farther back. But I wanted to just show you in case you're looking for something to keep the dust off of your brushes if you don't want to keep them in a container. Looky looky. Yes, keeps it dust free. Now this is also from the dollar store. Isn't this great? Three dollars. And uh, it has a palette that you can you know make into a watercolor palette. It has the lid and it also has the cleaning on the bottom and places to put your paint brushes on the sides for three dollars. Look at that. Isn't it awesome? Well the colors that I'm going to be using in the brushes are orange and then we're going to use the Cambodge right here and the next two colors that we're going to be using are the olive green and we're going to be using the rose red and these are the exact colors that Sandy used on her painting. I think it was today or yesterday, I can't remember. <laughs> and the turquoise and the purple, I pulled out uh, the same colors as Sandy used, but I wanted to do it in a folk art. Here's the violet, uh, opposed to doing it traditional. Traditional is more precise, and folk art leans towards um, mixed media. It has a mixed media nature because folk art is generally done on uh, different mediums like cloth and metals and paper and all kinds of things. And because I love mixed media, folk art just is natural coloring for me and uh, the difference you will see. So I start out, if you saw Sandy Knox painting, boy I think it was, might have been today. <laughs> There's my brush, oh yay! That's how it goes on. All these little wee speckles of wonderfulness and um, yeah so if you want to do traditional watercolors and I love to do realism paintings as well and this is more, if you look at Sandy's uh, watercoloring. This is exactly uh, the style here. It's more towards a realism flower than it is the folk art. Uh, and I'll show you folk art coloring to me is uh, not as precise and I'm going to change this up. I do not want this to be exact because it's going to be on a mixed media piece. Now watch, when I sprinkle this brush on right there, that, it, leave it like that and you have a traditional uh, watercolor piece because it's not uh, doesn't blend itself to a mixed media look and as you can see there I am pushing the colors out away from it but if you tip your watercolor or your brush o down onto the water and leave it just like that and stop it is more you get more realism here here I want it to in my eyes anyway this is in my eyes now because I did not stick with uh, uh, Sandy's exact picture because I'm doing a bigger canvas uh, type card, like it's bigger. And I left that in there because when I uh, blew on the brush hole <laughs> to get it off the paper, look what it did. You have to be very careful because yeah, I gave it a really good uh, off there and it blew it right up onto the page. But that's okay because like I said, it's more like a, it's not in a realism. If you were drawing a ro roses like this, you would not make them so round like these are in a larger uh, setting. They, they 
have a different look all to themselves. Now, the thing about folk art that I wanted to bring uh, to your attention for me is, you know that I can't stand to have any white cardstock showing. <laughs> so I add a lot of brush out. I cover this white cardstock up completely. Now, wherever you put water, uh, that's where your brush is going to stick. And you can either blow the powders off with your heat tool or just huff on it and it will come off. And so I just lay down the base. These are my little uh, rose buds. And I was inspired, like I said, by Sandy Alnock. If you go over on her channel, you'll see her painting. And it's uh, about half the size of the canvases uh, paper. The watercolor paper is half the size as this. So I ended up spreading the flowers instead of keeping them uniform to one side like uh, Sandy did. And it was an amazingly beautiful card she made. It was just ultra beautiful. I encourage you to go over and take a look at it. You probably have. She has billions of subscribers. <laughs> and uh, But here I didn't want to go for realism. I wanted to go for um, this folk art mixed media look. Now if you want to see realism flowers I have a video that I did some time ago showing you how to draw realistic roses and I'll try to remember to put it in the description box. Now here I'm adding some leaves uh, around the rose buds and so I'm slowing it down here. I'm using my number, this is a number four brush, but I switch in and out from a four to a two. And when you put the water on and you tap on your brush out here, I love the fact that it stays within the water. Even if it goes out, you can quickly just blow on it and move it out of the way. But for mixed media, here I wanted to show you the difference between I keep this rose if you'll remember this this is a realism more of a realistic rosebud the rest I do in a bulky folk art look even the background is completely different uh, than doing a actual uh, realistic drawing now I like realistic drawings uh, here I'm just pressing down on it to spread it out. I want it to spread out because all of this white card stuff will not be showing <laughs> when I'm done. And I want it to deepen the red here. Um, I like my colors deep. I like the hues on these roses. I like those to be a deep, deep red. So here um, I've set the base. I'm not finished with that. Uh, the roses yet and I'm going for the uh, background. And I just love when you watch somebody else's uh, video that they're, they're so talented and uh, you get inspired, but yet you do your own rendition of what you see. So I continue to get my background staged here behind the flowers. And you will see as I continue on here that I leave the little bits all over the outside of the flower base here. And I love watercoloring in the sense that it takes away the perfection that uh, everybody looks to have, you know? It's nice to put a bowl of flowers out and to draw them in realistic form, but it's also nice to uh, get inspired by a painting you see. Here I am just, sorry, I'm just going to jump in here. I'm just uh, sprinkling on the violet at the top. And these purple flowers, when you look at them, I wanted them to look more like feathers instead of looking like a uh, sprig of flowers out there and um, now I'm going in to make my roses look a little bit more like roses take the pink out and put a little bit more red deep color into it I like this uh, look here in the sense that uh, you oh cinnamon is right beside me and she just keeps sighing if you hear her she loves it when I do editing she loves to lay right here beside me and uh, snore and sigh so anyway yes she's a big 120 pound bull mastiff and she pretty well can do what she wants yeah she's a spoiled little baby now I move on to deepen the colors towards the bottom and at the end I take my number two brush and I make the feathers the purple colored flowers that look more like feathering a little bit more distinctive and uh, here I just grab uh, paper towels and I dab it where I want to lighten it up 
just may need to take a lot of the uh, lines out. I do like when it feathers out, you know, the colors. I don't mind that at all. But some I want to be a little lighter than others. So here's my number two brush and I'm going to go in and deepen some of the roses. And now that I have more of the background set, I can go in and detail the flowers and spritz on the brush. I'll interject here. I think the difference between the color burst and the brush out is the brush out has so many more pigmented colors in one color like the orange will have uh, little bits of uh, yellows and different hues in it and uh, the color burst are pretty well true to the color that it says on the container. I like to uh, go in now and deepen some of the background color and I want to make my flowers not so that you can't see the white in the cardstock here. So I'm going to move it out. My little feathered flowers, I'm going to give them a little bit more detail. And I wanted to also add that I hold my watercolor paper down with washi tape. I find my washi tape isn't as sticky as the uh, painter's tape. So here I had envisioned poppies when I was doing the poppy flower. But I loved the blue that Sandy used in her um, painting. So I kept to the blue, but I just made them look more like a poppy flower to me in my mind. So here I'm going into detail, and you can see I'm really, uh, yeah, because I only stuck that one pin with the blunt end on there. I don't have a lot of holes in the top of the um, brush. -o. Otherwise, the powders would fan out more, so I thought just one would be nice. So here I am just uh, moving out the colors so that they move into my background and detail them just and make detail them a little bit more and make them deep and rich in color. Um, a total different look altogether when you start applying deeper colors, isn't it? And um, yeah. And so what I'm going to do here, which I wanted to tell you is, I'm going to do the mixed media card base in a different, like in a part two. So I've got this all ready to go and I'm going to show you, uh, it looks more like a folk art card base, mixed media card base that I'm going to do next and uh, in another video so that this wasn't so long. Well, we're coming to the end here and I look forward to taking this painting and putting it on my mixed media card base for you. I'm setting this watercolor paper down on my Bob Ross acrylic um, palette. As you can see the hole up there, I love his acrylic palette. It is beautiful and I got that at Michael's as well. So here I put some violet down on my mat and then I picked it up with my paintbrush and then I put it on uh, and spritzed it up there in the corner. I wanted to have some purple hues up on the right hand corner there and then because I am using my heat tool it will lighten up considerably and uh, here I'm just going back to add some little dots and do a little bit more detailing and we are going to head off to show you the papers that I used now, I'm using Heartfelt Creation Paper, of course. I love Heartfelt Creation Papers. They are beautiful. And I'm going to show you the difference it makes to have a background paper. Watch when I get these out. I'm just looking for some colors here to show you. And these, I, these are the ones I end up using. Now, look at if I place that down. Doesn't that have those roses stick out like that? Now, if I put this yellow paper down, you can see how different that painting looks and now look at it on the green I think it just deepens and enriches the colors there and then I added these um, diamonds because in those diamonds it had all the colors but that's not the look I'm going for so I took that out and look at it on the blue those little blue poppies that aren't really poppies yeah and then I'm going to show you the yellow brings out the orange and then this violet smaller paper. I just talk, took that out of my stash and I want to show you all the looks and these are the four papers that we'll be using in the next video. As always, thank you for subscribing and thank you for viewing. Take care everybody.